I need to just chill the fuck out and stop putting all of the put all of it on you it's in part because i'm kind of obsessed with him (laughs) and so i'm just like "Ah, i just want to like love you with lists and calendars and love (laughs) and just all of the energy just goes over there um which is not helping i'm eric newton and this is together the podcast where we explore the truth about human relationships As a divorce lawyer, I saw thousands of couples break up firsthand. These days, I'm not so interested in breaking couples up, nor in keeping them together. I'm interested in what our relationships can teach us about ourselves and the world that we live in. So on this show, we have honest conversations with real people about real relationships. Money and sex. Now, last week, I made the claim that these are the two most direct access points to our unconscious selves. And so we focused on a story about sexual trauma. This week, it's a story, at least in part, about money. Now, one of the classic reasons for breakup that you hear over and over in the divorce office is essentially the identity shift. We're all human, and so inevitably we change. Our relationships need to change as well, or they become stale and they hold us back. The challenge, of course, is when that change isn't certain or it includes an element of risk, which, of course, it always does. Couples are in the constant process of managing change, and doing so is one of the most important skills that we all need to cultivate if we want our relationships to work. Now, another word for this skill, in my view, is surrender, but we'll get back to that later in the story. And that brings us to our guests today, Paul and Sarah. Now, it's fair to say that Paul is something of a unicorn. He's beloved by his friends, and he's exceptionally successful, but he requires a certain kind of care and feeding. I haven't been in a grocery store in five years. Wow. Maybe seven. That's Paul. Now, he and Sarah are a very powerful match. I'm the chief operating officer. So the things that are very easy for me are scheduling and list making and getting things done and coordinating. The reason these two work so well together when they do is that they each have mastered their respective domains Paul creates and Sarah organizes. That shared burden creates a flow in their relationship. But recently the system has been stressed, and not just by change, but by change involving both money and identity. Last year, Paul took a high-risk, high-reward job, and it just wasn't working out. He became disillusioned, and he quit. Here's Paul describing how that impacted the two of them. My baggage that brings to the table is that since I've met Sarah, I've been making a significant amount of money. Yeah. And, you know, and when I took the company public, it was, it was an enormous amount of money. Yeah. And I, I collapse Sarah's partnership with me and that association of being, you know, having a lot of money because we've been able to do a lot of great things. Um, and so there's, there's, there's concern over how that's going to look. You have concern of over course, how that's going to look. Of course, yeah. yeah. And so I'm bringing that to the table. And ultimately, if you know, if, if we were on the psychotherapist couch, I understand all. You know, the answer in the back of the book is, don't, don't have that be the reason why she leaves you to prove yourself right. Right? Like, be, <laughs> true, 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 true. Um, and true. I and I really and I'm. I am going through this crisis of faith because I don't want to work. I mean, it's just these, this, I don't know, 30 days off has been really great. And, yeah. and I work in an, in, an, in an industry that's really just, you know, at the end of the day, we sell stuff to people that they can't afford and don't need. And that's every day is you're just figuring out how to sell more of that. And yeah. uh, it's not very fulfilling, except for the money side of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love that you're pensive because it's time to turn to you about that. <laughs> uh, you know, and this is a cl- this is like one of the three or four classic challenges that couples face. Yeah. By the way, is the money? N- not even the money. Um, money, yes, for sure, always. Yeah. But there's um, 
it's the identity shift thing. Yeah. Uh, and it happens in every relationship and sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller, but you meet somebody as a particular person mm -hmm. and you establish a relationship as that person. And then because you're a person, you change. And then, um, and then there's a fear that, wow, well, maybe you're the person who fell in love with you isn't going to love you anymore because you're not the same person that you were. And then if you layer money on top of it, and then if you're a man, if you're the male in our culture on top of that, mm -hmm. so you're the guy who's making money and that was your identity. <laughs> yeah. And your, and your network and your, I mean, yeah, it was a big part yeah. of your life. And you guys moved. Yeah. So every, all of that went away and, um, and now he, now, he, and now he wants to know, will you still love me? Fundamentally, that's what yeah. he's asking. Yeah. So I, I probably, that was a leading question. Do you still love him? Yes. But, um, but what, what's, what's going changing? on? Yeah. yeah. What's changing? What's going on for you? So with Paul, he, um, I, I see, you know, what a big reputation you have in space and, and everything. And I'm so happy you're taking time off because you're super burnt out <laughs> and this is good for you. This is healthier than what you were doing two months ago, for sure. Um, Paul has always said it like a thread in, in, in our time together has been like, you feel a big thing of like, it, things are not su sustainable, right? Like this is not sustainable. And, and we live a pretty small life. We do not have a big nut, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we keep it, we, we have a pretty small nut, I would say, um, comparatively. And you've always said this is totally unsustainable. Like this is, you know, everything we're doing is unsustainable. We need to learn how to, you know, live on like $20 a day and this and that. Um, so I know you have a thing around sustainability and money. And I know you also have a thing that, that I'm with you because of, you know, all of these things that come with being with you and, and, you know, trips that I join you on and, and couches and whatever. Um, and I always say the same thing, like, that's nice, but that's not going to keep me in bed, you know, for another nine years. Like, um, I don't know. It doesn't, I feel like it doesn't have to be that extreme. And yes, like I'm, I'm happy for him that he's taking time off and he's, you know, has an opportunity to be a much healthier person than he was a couple months ago. And this is good. And I want the, I want you to continue to evolve, you know, and I'm, I would love for you to go volunteer abroad and I would love for you to discover and change and I don't know, become a paramedic or whatever it is you want to do. Uh -huh. And I don't, and I can't, and back to the, the question, like, I can't promise you that I'll love you forever. I assume I will, given how I feel today. Um, but I'm in with it, you know, like yeah. we're in it together. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I, I, I feel that. Okay. I'm more interested in a transition to like healthier and happier as opposed to a transition of more money versus less money. That's, that's more interesting to me. Like the things that are sustainable, like money is not, is not sustainable. Money will come and go and things will happen. Like I want health sustainable. I want happiness and like mental health and, and relationships. Like those are the things that are most important to me. Now, what Sarah is saying here is absolutely true for her and it's true for Paul as well, but it falls a bit flat because there's yet another layer going on below that intention on the surface. So here's my attempt to get to that. If he doesn't work, you don't care. You just have to readjust the dynamic, but you're, you're down. I would want him to do something. Yeah. Like I can't have like bonbons, you know, on the couch all day. Yeah. Like I need, yeah. I need to be with someone who's doing, who's up to something, who is on purpose. Yeah. So as long as there is purpose and and it's healthy and it's making him happy and he's growing as a person, yeah. whether or not there is a steady paycheck with that or not doesn't matter to me. As long as we work together to like scale down our lifestyle and like I would be fine with that. Does what she's saying sound credible to you? Yeah. I, Does your unconscious believe it? Like, can, can you, or do you still, because you're leaning away right now and you were looking, you keep looking this way, away from her. So I keep thinking he's not. He doesn't totally believe me. He doesn't it. believe it. <laughs> or maybe he believes her, but he doesn't believe him. Ah, well, what's going on? Yeah, there's nuances of it. He, he, and, and again, this isn't, I don't mean to take it all on, but I made 5X, 10X what she did. And so I covered a lot of the expenses in. A lot of the things that I liked, like, you know, going out to dinners and going to Ritz Carlton for skiing and which we just got back from and and I haven't been forced to adjust the lifestyle and we've been I've been talking about this for a long time of we've got to scale back, but then when we get the apartment in Manhattan it's it's the nice apartment. Yeah, it's not the yeah. it's not the crappy one. Um, but like I don't know, there's only a few things that like 
she puts too much coffee in the coffee maker. I'm just like, you're not being conscious of how much that how much coffee, like you're wasting coffee. <laughs> so good. And we have so many fights about coffee between oh my God. half and half. And it just, it rocks me to like my fundamental core because I'm just like, I, there's going to be a point where we can't afford coffee and you're just wasting it's it. It's not going to be that extreme. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it's a, it's a, the coffee is a metaphor. I will always work. I know, I know, but I'm, yeah, I got that. Well, Look, it, that is so beautiful because the coffee, it's so great. Um, I couldn't think of a better example, actually, because the coffee is it, is the primary example of something that doesn't cost anything and and um, really isn't going to matter on the margin. Yeah. Uh, that said, it's you guys are fighting about it consistently, so it's <laughs> deeply embedded. While you're paying for the expensive apartment and still going skiing, yeah. you're worrying about the coffee. Which uh, obviously rationally doesn't matter. Yeah, the the uh, doesn't add up logically, but it's speaking to this deep underlying, deep concern about how would you put it? Uh, Sustainability, Uh, and that's just that's not only yeah that's just us being together, Uh, but you know, uh, internalizing that as well, like my own existence. because, I, I, yeah, I haven't quite got to the point where I'm ready to give up Ritz Carlton skiing, and I don't know how I'm going to do that without getting back into the industry that just throws money at you for, you know, I mean, they, it's it's advertising. They, you can make a lot of money. It's 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 stupid, um, and uh, it does seem like there's this. It's a fundamental characteristic that I see every morning when I'm up, that, that I'm just like, okay, she's, she's not getting it and she doesn't have the mindset for frugality in, and so I, I make it mean totally a lot. But that's totally not I fair. Know, I know it's not I fair. buy vintage I, clothes. I know it's not fair. Like, but, we had, like that, some of the stuff in, our, in this living room, we got off the street, like, I don't buy anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, I shop at Goodwill, you know? Like, so it's like, and I work all the time. I know. And I'm talking about a side hustle and I save and and I make my own lunch. Like but so I'm I'm a I'm a fairly frugal person, you know. I don't like everything I all my clothes fit in this tiny little then apartment. Just measure the measure the freaking coffee. Oh my god! Is- I shop at Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> Sweaters and coats at Goodwill. Know, I'm sorry, I, they're I the best. I don't go shop. I don't um, go I don't go to Goodwill with So you. he doesn't see all this other frugality or like the I eat free food at you know, I take the office free food and so he doesn't see all this, but like if he sees too much coffee in the coffee maker, he's like, She's unsustainable. Eric, she doesn't grind the beans. There's whole beans that are in in this, in the, okay, in the enough about the coffee. <laughs> Before we started recording, we talked about things that were terrifying, right? Yeah. What is terrifying to me is not me working two jobs and Paul working zero jobs and us scaling this down and selling some of it off. And like, that is not terrifying to me. I know that I will always find a way to make some kind of money and support myself. Yeah. I, I feel like I have that. What is terrifying to me to be in an, um, in a relationship with anyone that was faltering forever yeah. or sp- spiraling down the forever. Per- the person was, you mean? The person was, yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be great leaps and bounds. They don't have to go and create their own podcast. They don't have to, like, money, money is not the thing for me. It is, it would be terrifying if I was with someone who was not, on purpose, who, you know, we all falter, we all get depressed, or we all have down times and up times, but it has to be, the person has to be growing net positive, and that might be too much to ask, <laughs> but that's what's terrifying for me. It certainly adds another dynamic of pressure to being on purpose, right? I know, I need you to be happier now, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, and it was, e- you know, look, I wouldn't say it was easy, but... There was this aspect of being on purpose around just accumulating wealth because of what wealth can can do, which is the sustainability. And occasionally, yeah, it's nice to go to Aspen, but look, I you know, I don't we we we're not overdoing it. You know, I don't we're not, we don't own a car, and you know, it's so it's not that. But it it's coming out of this startup, and I kind of knew this from before. Is just like I don't want to do it again, and I 
don't know what the next thing is, so I am off purpose. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a big thing that she finds attractive. So there's, you know, that, that's added pressure. Um, on a situation where I'm not sure that I can, I have yet been able to access that as a motivator. It, it's just another, it's just another thing. I want to know, Sarah, do you, you don't share the fear that he has about that, do you? For myself personally or yeah, for him? For the, for, for him and for the two of you, you don't think he's, or maybe you do, maybe I'm, I'm leading you the wrong direction. Do you think he's going to end up eating bonbons on the couch? No. Yeah. I would say if there's a negative spiral, right? Like if it becomes laziness or if you become unhealthy um, or mm. we, ha you know, if you're, you know, like, what do we talk about? I don't know. Like we got, you got to be up to something. You got, I don't, you don't have to have a, a full life purpose and commit yourself to this amazing thing, but you got to be up to something or else I'm going to ask you how your video game's going. Like I need, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, what did you just hear in that? Um, I've got three months. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to use them wisely. <laughs> oh, here it goes. <laughs> he's a magical unicorn. He's like, what is it, Bacchus and yeah, Dionysus. He and he's all of those things, right? He's, he's the pleasure seeker. And there's a huge part of him that is just sloth-like and just you know, um, just bring me the senses and bring me the women and the wine, you know, um, and that's a huge part of who he is. Um, so do I think, I think that he is, uh, is in, in touch with reality enough to not be that person forever. Um, I don't think he's going to be on the couch eating bonbons while I'm like, he wouldn't enjoy that either because that's not in his mind, like what a man does. Like a man doesn't, you know, lie around all day for weeks and months and, and kind of contribute anything. You know, you're a contributor, you're a sensory person. Um, and so I don't think that, I don't think that you will be like that. Mm. Even though I know that deeply, like, that's all you want to do is just take baths all day yeah, <laughs> right absolutely. now. And you should really, for, for really a little is. while. Yeah. <laughs> and then I need purpose, baby. And, and, and it's <laughs> funny because we, I remember this happened on like a Wednesday and I had, mentioned sir like look in two weeks if i'm not uh on track or working out every day or doing something just just give me a friendly reminder and i said that on a wednesday and on friday she came home and it was really my first full day off of work and i even had a meeting that day because but you know and and so she came home and i was asleep and there was like a six pack of beer or something and i poured through half of it and she's like um so well, when are you working out? When, what's going to, you know, it was like right back into it. it no, was I'm, like, so, I'm such a nagger. Oh my gosh. And I was like, gosh, I didn't even get one full day. Yeah. Uh, I'm the worst. Uh, and, and that's, you know, I, I think that's an okay thing in, in a lot of respects. Cause in some ways I, I need a little bit of a reminder at this time because I really, it's, it's just really nice taking a bath in the middle of the day or, you know, have, you know, just, just drinking some beer and kicking uh -huh. back. And I have this little video game that I play that she hates. That is just uh -huh. really fun. And, 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 and so that's the mode that I'm in. So she said, so you, so Sarah, you say the words, but then he has evidence that you don't, that there's a contradiction between your words and your actual. Yeah. I mean, he'll, I'm get, he, I'm, he's taking time off and I want him to have it. I want him to spit out of all this healthier. And I want, I don't know. I'm just, the, the struggle that we have is like, I want things for him. Like I want things for myself and I want things for him and he, and I'm impatient and I'm nagging and all this has been established on tape. Um, <laughs> and I'm a scheduler and a doer. And so my idea of time off is like, you know, let's go volunteer and let's do this and teach children to read or, da -da -da. <laughs> yeah. you know, and like every day has a schedule. My weekends are scheduled, you know, and that's who yeah. I am. And, uh, and I, tr and I sometimes impose that. Yeah. And I, when I see the opposite <laughs> so of good. that, you know, cause we are complete opposites. When I see the opposite of that, I, 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 it is so hard for me not to be like, here's 10 appointments, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. um, and so it is my responsibility during your time off to make sure that it is time off and that you are shaping your days and weeks the way that you want to. Yeah. 
but I have some ideas about how I think you should, how I think you should spend your time. <laughs> well, you know, the, the superpower of Paul has always been that he's unrepentant about his Bacchanalian self, yes. you know, and um, that's what makes him hilarious and a genius. And your superpower, obviously, is the structure and the superpower of the relationship has been the combination of those two things. Yes. And, uh, and so this is really fun to watch you guys work out the new balance. Because he, he has to be unrepentant, but you have to be structured. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, if you don't take a bath with the six packs and maybe just fill the bath with, I don't know, whipped cream or something, I'm going to be really just disappointed. Just go there. Just yeah. totally go there. <laughs> I'm going to be really disappointed. Well, it's, I have <laughs> pictures. It, it's been done. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should enro- enroll her in creating structure for your Bacchanalia. Oh, my gosh. This great couples therapist, Harville Hendricks, came up with this school of thought and um, articulates it far more elegantly than I can. But the kernel of it essentially is that we find partners who um, who trigger our most unresolved or you could say immature stuff. Um, and then they do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. And it's painful. And then you can break up or you can, um, you can, because you triggered that stuff for your partner, be there for them to heal it. And it's not just one direction, it's bilateral. So you're both triggering one another simultaneously. Mm. Um, And then the funny thing about it is the thing that you need to do to grow is also the same thing you need to do to make your partner feel safe so that they can heal the core wound that's having the trigger come up Mm. and it's going in both directions at once but looking at it from just one direction if that theory is right and assuming i articulated it right uh you've got to make him feel safe to be soupy yeah so that he can so that he can heal whatever the wound is that's being triggered right now Mm -hmm. um and the thing to make him feel safe, you have to re, you have to stretch in a way that you're not used to. Um, and I don't know what it is. It sounds like it might be being a little soupy yourself because you're maybe a little too structured. I don't know. Yeah. Or it could be somehow figuring out how to tell him that you're going to love him, even though it might take three years instead yeah. of three months. Yeah. Probably a little bit of both. Okay. He needs, I mean, he knows, you know, that, that I'm in it for the long haul. We are tied together in many ways. Um, And that also, you know, our relationship is one of impermanence and that we choose each other every day. And, you know, we don't have to legally undo ourselves, although we're so tied together and so emotionally codependent. (laughs) I don't know how that would ever happen. Um, So I get security. um, And I I get where I need to just chill the fuck out and stop putting all of the put all of it on you it's in part because I'm kind of obsessed with him (laughs) and so I'm just like I just want to like love you with lists and calendars and love (laughs) and just all of the energy just goes over there um which is not helping the way that it's not having the intention that I want it to have yeah you know I see that I totally see that I feel like I'm doing that for 10 different things for him. And he's like, it's all noise and none of this is really what I actually want to be doing in this moment. And so I, I can see how it all falls away. I'm having a, I'm having a breakthrough. <laughs> Eric, you're taking me to a breakthrough. Um, I can see how all of that noise and, and nagging, for lack of a better word, and pushing the cart forward. For me, it's checking boxes towards a goal, right? And for him, it's just noise and then it all collapses. And then the statement that you don't know if you'll love him forever. Oh, it's a hard thing to hear. But well, you know, we're, we're, well, yeah, we're all alone. We're I mean, we don't even we don't even fucking know who we're sitting here talking to. We're existentially solitary. Yeah. I mean, nihilism I am the, is inescapable. <laughs> but 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 we're also having this fantasy, if that's what it is. We're having this experience of being in a relationship. So you also got to play that game I know. while also acknowledging the truth that you're alone. So. 
Okay, in the game that you're playing, yes. where there are other people, yeah. and you do love them, yes. what can you promise him? It is, yes. I don't see a future where I'm not loving Paul, and he is not loving me. I don't know. Like, I love my mother. I love my family. I love Paul in the same way. I, I don't promise my mother that I will always love her. I just do. And so I can't promise Paul that I will always love him. I just do. You can promise that you'll stick it out until he figures this out. I totally even promise that painful, I will stick it out. Even if it takes three times longer than you Yes. Think. <laughs> I will stick it out as long as I can. Um, and hopefully he will stick it out with me. Because it goes both ways. You know, like... This is a two-way street. Like, you have to stick it out with me being who I am, what I'm up to these days. I, you have to stick it out with me doing my thing while you're doing your thing. I got, I, that's, um, yeah, that's why we're on a podcast. <laughs> Talking it out. <laughs> um, I'm in. I've always been in. I'm always on the Paul train. But the Paul, you know, but I'm on the Paul train, so you got to take me with you. Mm -hmm. And you, gotta, you have to be able to stick it out through my neuroses and my nagging calendaring. Paul, am I missing something here? No, I, I, th I think you're, we touched upon something I didn't know we were going to go to, so it, it's, it's good. Um, in order for a long-term sustainable relationship between Sarah and Paul, Paul needs to be on purpose because that's what Sarah finds attractive and when Paul gets on purpose and circled back around to pick up Sarah, Sarah needs to be Sarah needs to be enlightened matched. I need and, to match and you there. Conscious and aware of of her feelings rather than having everything be a list or something to be taken care of. Yeah, I need to match you there. Yeah. And when we met, Paul was very much on purpose. He was in men's circles, he was coaching men, he had the job, the dog, the you like you were extremely on purpose and I was not at that time. And, you know, there's been flip flops and now we're at another flop. Or flip. Or flip. <laughs> flip sounds more positive. <laughs> As I said at the outset, managing change is a skill that we all need to develop if we want our relationships to be successful. Those flips and those flops that Sarah is talking about are absolutely unavoidable, as are the constant shifts in our own identities. We never really know who we are, much less who these mysterious partners are that we've ended up with. And surrendering to that is one of the keys to enjoying this mystery that we're all living. Now, I checked in with Paul and Sarah before editing this episode. It had been several months since we recorded this one. And I'm happy to report that they're in much the same place. There's no perfect tidy ending to this one. Paul is considering getting back into advertising, but he's having a hard time convincing himself that it matters. And the truth is, it doesn't matter. We all know that our careers are just not as important as we make them out to be. But their relationship does matter, at least to them. And that's the point here. Meaning and purpose, they may be fabricated, but this experience of life, this ongoing narrative of ourselves and our relationships, that continues. And we may as well pour ourselves into it because it's all we've really got. If you liked what you heard on the show today, there are two things that you can do to support us. The first is leave a review on iTunes. It is very helpful when you do that. The second is become a subscriber. We would love your support. As a subscriber, you'll get bonus content, unedited interviews when our guests are okay with that, early access to most of our episodes, and a community of other listeners. You can find links to all of that on our website, which is www.together.show, and we would love to have you. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram, both at together underscore show and our Facebook page, which is a great way to communicate with us and this community I've been talking about is facebook.com slash together show. And you can always email me at host at together guide. If you've got any ideas or you just want to say hello, the music in this episode is by blue dot sessions. And you can find their website at sessions dot blue. All right, folks, that's all for today. See you next week.